Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Are you glad? Are you a cheerful giver? I said, are you cheerful givers? That is a secret. Some people are giving the offerings and the tithes, but they're not getting the results. You know why? You are not cheerful. And when a person's cheerful, you'll inform your face you are cheerful. You, you know what I'm saying? You know, have a big smile with a glad heart. Say, Lord, why do you give your tithes and offerings? Why do you give your tithes and offerings to the Lord? Anyone can give me the answer. Why do you give the tithes, your tithes and offerings to the Lord? <laughs> Why do you give your tithes and offerings to the Lord? What did she say? Command from God. Okay. Who else can tell me? Why do you give your tithes and offerings to the Lord? That the house of the Lord may be full. For protection. All right. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you give your tithes and offerings to the Lord because you love Him. <laughs> That's what you do. And I'm telling you, very important. If you have been giving your tithes, bringing your tithes to the storehouse and giving your offerings to the Lord, but you have not seen the results, the kind of results you want, check your heart. Check your heart because God loves a cheerful giver, a hilarious giver. He just wants a prompt, diligent, want-to-do giver. You got that? So why do you bring your tithes and offerings to the Lord? I can't hear you. Did you hear what they said? I didn't hear you. Why do you bring your tithes and offerings to the house of the Lord? Because you love God, right? That means no one has to twist your arm. No one has to yank a tooth out. No, you just love Him. Some of you, why do you pray? Some of you are praying to put mileage to your prayers. So that you can tell all your friends, I prayed three hours. That's all the reward you'll get, the accolades of men. But we pray because we love Him. Why do you study the Word of God to quote Scripture? So that everybody could say what, a, what an intelligent person you are and how knowledgeable you are? No. You read your Bible because you love God. Why do you come to church to make pastor happy? Shame for those that are doing that. You come to church because you just can't stay away, man. Just love God. I'm telling you, many Christians are suffering. They're suffering for nothing. Some of you, perhaps you're on an age, you know, in your 50s and your 60s, and you think, well, because I've attained that age, I'm wise now. No, you're void of understanding. Because if you were not void of understanding, you'll get the kind of results that the Bible talks about. You understand? So it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, it's how your heart responds to God. That is a secret. So why do we come to church? We love God. Bring our tithes and offerings, we love God. Why do we love other people, the brethren in the church? Because of our love for God. The love He has given us, we give to others. Why do I write books? I love God. And I want to feed, you know, Jesus said to Peter, He said, Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord. He says, feed my sheep. Then again, he asked, he said, Peter, do you really love me? He said, yes, Lord. He says, feed my sheep. And then Jesus turned around and asked him for the third time. He says, you really love me, Peter? By the time, Peter was fed up. When you ask me one question three times, then I give you the answer. Of course I love you. Then he said, feed my lambs. So when I preach to you and I teach you, 
And when I write books, and we give you the CDs and the DVDs, it's because I love to feed God's people the Word of God because I love Him first. Some people think it's the suit you wear. Suit is nothing. Hear what I'm saying? It's wisdom. Because sometimes people miss things. They think, well, it's a snazzy car you drive, the nice house you stay, or the nice suit you And Some people want to be a pastor. You say, well, I want to be like pastor, you know, dress nice, walk nice. You don't know nothing yet. I do this because I love Him. I don't do this for money. I don't do this for fame. We're not on TV because we want to be famous. We're not writing books because we want to be famous. We don't want to do this here because I'm... Listen, the only reason pastor's here because I love Him. Now all the pressure is leaving you now. Now you know why you're serving God. It's basic, back to the basic, because we love Him. So now all your clocking hours of prayers is now out the window. <laughs> all your giving now to get, make an impression is out the window. I give God and I love Him. I sometimes think I don't give him enough. I come to church because I love him. Are you with me? Did you learn something today? Yes. Everything you will ever do in life, in the Christian life, the centerpiece, the hub of all your activity. You understand? See, prosperity is the spoke. You got that? All the nice things God gives you, He adds to you. Gives you favor, gives you money, gives you a nice house, gives you nice clothes. All those things are the results. Don't camp at the results. Those are, but the centerpiece of your whole life is your love for God. Are you with me? We are anointed because we love God. Oh, I hope. Listen, if I close the service now, you got something. You are not functioning in the Christian life because of any other reason. You want to know Pastor's secret? I'll tell you my secret. You really want to know my secret? My, I have only one secret. I just love him with all my heart with all my mind, with all my understanding. That is the basis of my life. Everything else you see is the fruit. That's it. It's just so simple. Now, all your wrong motives are out the window. All your clocking of mileages, out the window. All your good works, out the window. All your snazzy stuff, out the window. Some of you I know, you think, well, if I just wear a nice suit, put some oil in my hair, <laughs> brush it back, look chic, you know, nah, that's it. No, sir, love God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your understanding. That's it. Turn around to someone and say, I love God. Tell him I love him very much. Say, I love him very, 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 very much. Say, I love Jesus very much. Say, Jesus, we love you with all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our souls, with all of our understanding. That's my life. Tell someone else now, congratulations, you now understand your reason for living. All right, then you may take your seat. Praise the Lord. You need to raise up my volume a little bit. Praise God. Amen. All right, now you have insight into life. Your reason for living is to love God. You understand? It's not your office, it's not your calling, it's not what you have. 
It's not what you can get out of God. I just love Him, alright? And you just love Him. Alright, we'll do the communion just now, but I want you to... Uh, let's read uh, a scripture. I want to talk to you briefly on uh, understanding. And I want to read to you Proverbs chapter, chapter 4, verse 7. It says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. If you can give me more volume, I'll appreciate it. Thank you. You found Proverbs 4 verse 7, right? Why are you in church this morning? Mm -hmm. So Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Now well, that is very important for you to get understanding. You understand? So that you understand why you do certain things in life. There mustn't be any hidden agenda or any hidden motive. You just do things because, boy, I love God. I, I, I don't need a reason to serve God. God's revealed Himself to me. Uh, no one has to convince me now or can try and convince me there's no God. Because God has revealed Himself to me personally, to you personally. You've now had a revelation that God exists. You might have been an atheist before, the agnostic before. You might have been someone that didn't give God, pay God much attention. But since the day... God revealed Himself to you. You have decided once and for all, boy, God is for real. And from that day, God has not only set His affection on you, but you have now set your affection on Him. And then you started a love relationship. You understand? You start a love relationship with God. So I don't, I don't have to have a reason to spur me on to love God. I can't get offended now. I'm offense free. I can't get upset. I mean, you know, let my love for God wane down. That's not how I serve God. I just love Him. I want to read my Bible. I want to do things. I have a passion for Christ. From, from the inside. I may not be able to explain it to everybody. By the way, they don't all understand me. They would rather go to the rugby or scream about a football match. But uh, my affections have changed. So is yours. It's now in God. And they don't understand me. Neither do they understand you. But we understand. Because the Holy Spirit sought fit to reveal to us the love of God. So the Bible says that the love of God has been shed abroad our hearts by the Holy Ghost. I want to do things in the kingdom of God because I want to. I can hardly stand it. You understand? It means I've got to speak to someone. I've got to testify. I've got to preach the word of God. I want to find an opportunity to give and express my love because love without work, you know, Love is not expressed without works. I've got to do something to show God, boy, I love you so much. Are you with me? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So the Bible says with wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. That means you start to understand why you do certain things. When you understand why you do certain things, guess what? Your mind is illuminated and you function from that standpoint. In other words, I understand why I serve God. I understand the reason for my believing. You, you, are you with me? Now the Bible tells us in Psalm 103 verse 7, it says, He made known His ways 
unto Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel. Now, the children of Israel, they saw God acts. In other words, they knew the acts of God. But see what the Bible tells us about Moses. It says, he made known his ways to Moses. So there's a difference. Let me tell you what the difference is. Moses understood the ways of God. He understood the whys. He understood the reasons. And it is the ways that actually give way for the acts of God. And many people want the acts of God, but they don't want the ways of God. You see the difference? The Bible tells us Moses what? He made known his ways unto Moses. He knew how God functioned. He knew the reason why God did certain things. Now, when, when, when Moses knew the ways of God, uh, he performed the acts of God. See, he, he, he got water out the rock. Why? He knew the ways of God. So he got the acts of God. Or he could perform the acts of God. You cannot perform the acts of God without knowing the ways of God. It is better to start from there that you may understand what is the ways of God. How can I please God? What, what, what makes God tick? What makes my relationship with God successful? If I can understand his ways, wow, I will see his acts. And one of, the, one of, the, way, one of the, the, the ways I told you this morning, everything you do in life, your centerpiece, the hub of your whole spiritual walk in life, I love God. I give to God because I love God. I come to church, I love God. I come to prayer meeting, I love God. I read my Bible, I love God. I can hardly stand the love of God. You know, the love is so much in me. It constrains me. Amen. It spurs me on. It gives me a drive. gives me a reason for getting up in the morning. Now, getting up in the morning, to, to many people, getting up in the morning is, I've got to get up in the morning so I can get to work. That's the wrong reason. You have to redefine your reason and purpose for living. That means when you get up in the morning, doesn't matter what sphere you're involved in, I'm talking about your employment or business, when you get up in the morning, as you open up your eyes, it's for God. Oh boy. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you go to bed at night and you had a successful day, and you accomplish a lot. You can only close your eyes and say, Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. What would I do without you? I could have been possessed with devils, running mad, running rampant, drug addict, sleeping in prison, aimless, fornicating, being on a street, not having a bed to sleep on, no home divorced I mean just my life was messed up but thank God for Jesus Hallelujah. oh Lord thank you that you have kept me sane that when the devil tried to destroy me you kept me Amen. when I had no hope you kept me Amen. I could have died a long time ago but you yes. kept me yes. how many times I can count on my fingertips, driving in the car. There should have been an accident. I could have been a statistic somewhere. But Jesus, you kept me. The children of Israel were murmuring to Moses. The Bible says to us, Moses communed with God. The Bible tells us Moses was a friend of God. You understand? Yes, now you're going to redefine everything in your life. 
you have to. The reason you get up in the morning, the love of God. The reason you dress up and you start to function in life, the love of God. The reason I minister to people, the love of God. The reason I pray for the sick, the love of God. The reason I do what I do is for the love of God. The reason I give to the work of God is out of my love for I mean, what price can you put to that? What? 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 When other people are being divorced left, right and center, your marriage is intact. What's keeping you? The love of God. The presence of the, of the Lord. Other businesses are going down left, right, center. Yours is intact. And it's prospering. Why? The love of God. In your heart, in your life. You understand? Oh, if you can get that. If you can redefine your reason for living. Your purpose in life is for the love of God. Sit down a minute. So it says here, it says, uh, He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. Now Proverbs 21 verse 16 says, The man that wandered out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. That means a person that is void of understanding. See, I'm trying to illuminate your understanding this morning. What is the reason you're doing all what you're doing? He says, the man that wandered out the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. That means you are living but merely existing if you are like that. But we are not of that congregation. Hallelujah. You understand why our understanding has been illuminated. I have an understanding why I'm living. I'm living for the sake of the... Ah, oh, you forget so quickly. No. I, uh, it's for the sake of the kingdom. You got that? Everything for the sake of the kingdom. Oh, catch me now. That's my whole purpose. For the sake of the kingdom of God. Everything I do, that means to expand God's kingdom. Why do I want my business to prosper? For the sake of the kingdom. Not that I can buy fancy houses and cars, although, although that is a byproduct of the blessing and the prosperity of God. But your principle, see, understanding. If you don't have that understanding, then you're amongst the congregation of the dead. But if you have that type of understanding, why does God want me to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus so I can lead other people? Why does God want me to prosper financially so that I can give more to the kingdom of God? Are you with me? A man that wandered out the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Now watch this in Proverbs 20 verse 7. 20 verse 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Would you say that after me? Say, the Spirit of the Lord Lord. is the candle. candle. Say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Spirit of man is a candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. The Spirit of man. (laughs) Are you getting a hold of that? The Spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. If you want success in life, activate and engage your spirit. (laughs) You missed it. Let me try this out. I said, if you want to have success in life, 
Activate and engage your spirit man. They are alive here. You got that? Because success is not just in copying what other people are doing. Because your motivation may be wrong. But true success, lasting success in the kingdom of God is to activate your spirit man. Engage it. In other words, let it be a candle. Let your spirit man be a candle. You're searching the scriptures. <laughs> it's like a torch, like a floodlight that's now shining. You, you, you're wanting a word out of the word. You want something. God must speak to you in whatever situation you find yourself. God just has to give you one word in that week, one word in that month. You know, when you engage, when you engage your spirit man, God tells you, it's okay, son, go ahead, I'm with you. Go ahead in that business, I'll make you succeed. Go ahead in that relationship, I'm blessing it. Go ahead with that deal you're doing, I'm with you. That's all you need, you engage your spirit man. Apply for that job. Your way is open. Go to the left. Go to the right. Stand still. Take a step forward. It's your spirit man. See? Your spirit man giving light to your life. That is the way. It's not in copying other people. It's not in copying other people. It's not now, you know, it's good to admire people. It's good to have mentors. It's good to have people set the pace so that you can learn by. But it is your spirit man. You know, sit down a minute. Let me share this with you. And a lot of people make this mistake. It's more like family talk this morning, all right? You're not jumping and shouting, but you're getting understanding. Lots of people think, well, if I can get in a relationship, if I know somebody, somebody of influence, see, you may know me and still be dry. You may know some important pastor and still be dry in your spirit. It's not the relationship that makes you. <laughs> Basic ingredient for success, I love God. Second ingredient for success, I engage my spirit man. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. In other words, for my life, God gives me a personalized blueprint. He tells me, this is the way you go. Walk therein. And you start to walk. And then it gets brighter. Your road gets broader. Some things start to happen. Success hits you. People look from the outside and say, wow, if I can copy him, if I can imitate him, I'll get the same results. Wrong. That is your way. God has designed it for you. God is a designer God. <laughs> we go to the shoe store and we buy the different shoes. We look at the different clothes, you know, the brand names. We say, wow, it, you know, this is by Gucci. Oh, don't know who that is anyhow. <laughs> Gucci. Think about that. We, we emphasize that. I mean, some of these guys, you know, they they, they they homosexuals. But they have a brand name. And we say, wow, this is by Armani. <laughs> so you emphasis, wrong emphasis on the wrong things. So we need to redefine all of that. Who says that's the best? Who? Who says so? We have a designer God. <laughs> what is more important than having a nice set of clothes, you know, giving a brand name, or God imprinting his life on a life? Take a drunkard, take a person that has no hope, take a person that's down and giving him a designer life. Which is more important? And then when we look at him in the church and say, we don't have to say this is by Armani, this is by God. <laughs> you understand? Designed by God. And God does not make any phonies. 
neither does he make anything that's defective. He makes everything, wow, he makes everything reflective. <laughs> so that means when the glory of God shines on you, you reflect that glory. Come on here, talk to me. Some people are not satisfied in their lives. They think their satisfaction will come talking to that one, threatening this one, interacting with that one. If I can be with a big shot, if I can be with that one, if I can be with people of influence, brothers and sisters in Christ, that is not the way. You have the greatest person in the universe. That's Jesus Christ who lives inside of you. That's enough to show off. <laughs> That's enough. Wow. I mean, I talk to Jesus. <laughs> he talks to me. Now, I appreciate people and I love people. I appreciate people. I love them. I thank God for relationships. I thank God that we can impart. I, think, I thank God the fact that we can learn from other men of God and women of God. I appreciate all of that. But boy, I know Jesus. What more could I look for? See, you're searching. You have not found. You're miserable. Because you have not found. You are seeking. But nothing is illuminated. You are speaking the right words. You are quoting the right scripture. You are praying the right prayers. You know how to start. Where to place the emphasis. Where to cross the T. Where to dot the I. You know what to say. How to say it. But it's empty. Christ is not in it. If you have found, we will see the satisfaction in your heart. If you have found, we will see the satisfaction in your life. I'm not searching anymore. I have found Him. You understand? I have found Him. He's the lover of my soul. I love him with all my heart. All my soul. All my understanding. Solomon prayed. He gave God 1,000 burnt offerings. God appeared in a dream. He said, Solomon, ask what you want. He did not ask for money. He didn't ask for wealth and fame and fortune. What did he ask for? He said, Lord, wisdom. God said, because you've asked wisdom and have not asked for wealth and riches. He says, because, in other words, he was saying, because your heart is right, Solomon. I will not only give you wisdom, I will give you everything else. See the emphasis. See the emphasis is in the wrong place. I want to serve God because I want to see what I can get. If I press this button, he'll give me that. I press this button, he'll give me that. No, sir. No. It's the love of God. You, you understand what I'm saying? People are confused. Even in the body of Christ, they're confused. I say this all the time. They're running from place to place searching. What are you searching for? Have you not found? If you have found, you'll be resting. No famous preacher is going to make you. No famous church is going to make you. No company is going to make you. No wealth in the bank is going to make you. It's Jesus Christ alone. It's a revelation of Christ. It's the revealed plan of God for your life. When you have found, you shall not look no more. That's what you need. Jesus, a revelation of Christ. A revelation of who you are. 
If you have, I am not confused anymore. I used to be confused, not anymore. I'm not anymore. I have found him. I know him. The apostle Paul cried, he said, that I may know him. Do you know him like that? If you would know him like that, then all your questions are set to rest. All your searching has now ceased. If you would find him, not people, not, you know, important people, not connections. It's like business connections. That's how we operate in the church, business connection. If I can network with this one, that one, if I can have conversation. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you need Christ. If you have him, you have everything. People look at me and they ask me sometimes, how are you achieving all that you're achieving? What is your success? I'll tell you what the success is. I love Jesus. I preach because I love him. I teach because I love him. I write because I love him. I give because I love him. I dress nice because I love him. I represent Christ well because I love Him and Him alone. There's no other Lord in my life save Jesus Christ, the Son of God. All that sets to rest everything. I don't have to tell you about my prayer life. I don't have to tell you about my fasting life. We walk around. We hear people all the time. I'm on a Daniel fast. I'm on an Esther fast. I'm on an Abraham fast. I'm on a boy, Haggai fast. Jesus said, if you fast, let it be done in private. He says, wash your face. He says, anoint your head. No one must know you fasting. He says, the Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. When you pray, you don't have to tell others, I'm praying for you. Because that's all you'll have is the accolade of man. Oh, thank you, brother. Thank you for praying for me. What a wonderful brother. That's all you'll have. But when you pray in secret, and cry and weep for people, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, in the privacy of your home, where you're not spending time with people, and having tea with them, networking with them, but you're crying and weeping before the Lord, all oh, that Christ may be fully formed. That wisdom, understanding, revelation will flood their understanding, Lord. Well, you're crying for the souls of people and that they will be developed in the things of God. If you are doing that in your privacy, God sees in secret and He rewards in secret. It's sad, some Christians will not make it to heaven. And some of us preaching won't even make it to heaven. Because <laughs> we're looking for the clean so fair. So if they tap us on the shoulders and say you're a great preacher and a famous man, and if they say nice things about us, that we think we accept it before God. But what man accepts, God rejects. And what man rejects, God accepts. That is the way. We have to redefine and look at our understanding again and see what God is searching for. So we don't strut around in church anymore telling people how much we pray. That's not the way. Let the Spirit of God tell them that you are praying for them. You don't have to walk around and tell people you are fasting. No. You don't have to walk around and tell people what you are doing for others and how much you are giving in the church. It's not your giving and the amount of giving that impresses God. It's the way you express it. That's what's important before God. And we have done so much damage to the church. We've taught people wrongly. 
They are searching for the wrong things. They are running after the wrong things. They're running, they're not running after God anymore. They're running after movements and apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors. God wants you to run after Him. You acknowledge men of God and women of God, but you run after Him that you may know Him. That's what the Apostle Paul said, Oh, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. I may know Him intimately. Lord, that I may know you, that as real as my family is to me, you would be real to me. It's not about fame and fortune. It's not about the things you give me, but my love for you. Let not my love wane for you, that I may understand you. David said, as the deer panted after the water, so will my soul <laughs> thirst after you <laughs> that in the secret part of my heart Lord I just love you yes. nobody else just you just you nobody else matters just you Amen. it's not about my ministry just you <laughs> that I may love the Holy Ghost with all my heart all my soul and all my spirit that is righteousness. That the fear of the Lord may come back to the church. As the Bible tells us the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all understanding. We think we can bluff God. But we can't bluff God. He wants your heart. Doesn't want anything else from you. He wants your heart. If He can get your heart, He can change others. That's what God's looking for, your heart. Your heart. You understand your heart that you may put away childish things from you that you may put away things that you're playing with that's not pleasing God put it away close up that box in your life these are just toys we're playing with we're impressing one another stop impressing one another because what's the use the man will smile at you and say what a wonderful brother you are what a wonderful pastor you are God does not know you When, 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 when the sons of Sceva, when the demons spoke, yes. says, Paul, I know. Yes. Jesus, I know. Yes. But the demons asked, who are you? Oh, so even the demons have recognized in the realm of the spirit that were certain authenticated by God. But he asked a question. He says, who are you? I don't know you. We're saying Jesus. But does he know you? We are saying, God, does he know you? Have you surrendered your heart to the Lord? Have you said yes to Jesus? Do you live to please him? Is the love of God shed abroad your heart by the Holy Ghost? Do you have the assurance if you would die today, you would go to heaven? You might have been in the church so many years. But do you know on the inside of you that if you would die, life would be worthless if you would die. As a Christian, even in church, but you would go to hell. Is it possible? Yes. Because it's with your heart you serve God. It's with your life you express your love for Him. You understand? It's not just the, you know, the things we're doing. No, it's your love. All oh, that I may know Him. That I may know Him. I'm in the church so long, Lord. I've done the right things. I've played the part. When there was music, I danced the right dance. I was born in the church. I was baptized. I was brought up an altar boy in the church. But Lord, everyone thinks it's okay, but I know inside of me it's not okay. Things are falling down. The cards are crumbling. 
But in the secrets of my heart, I know, Lord, everything's not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. I find myself lusting after things I should not be lusting after. I find myself yearning for things, oh Lord God, that I should not be yearning for. I now know that the only thing I should be yearning for is the love of Christ, the love of God. That's all I want. That's all I want. That's all that matters to me. It's not the byproducts. It's not the fame, the fortune, the money. It's God. I want God. I want God that I may know Him. That I may know Him. You understand? That I may know Him. Ah, today, before we take the communion table, there are many of you. You need to make right with God. Come to the front. Come. You know today you want to meet Him. You know today there are certain things you need to rest down. You need to leave at the altar of God today and say, Lord, that I may know you. As pastors preached and spoken from his spirit in his heart, that today I want to go with the assurance that if I would drop dead, I'm checking into heaven in the presence of God. Lord, I'm tired of being a phony now, pretending of being somebody I'm not. I come to church, I raise my hands, I lift up my hands, I worship him. Inside of me, I'm miserable. I want to be born again. I want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. If I have received him already, I want a revelation of who he is. That's what this life is about. That's what it is about. Because when you know God like that, you receive the peace of God. That transcends all human understanding. That's what it is about. You hear what I'm saying? That's what it is about. It's about the love of God. Many of you, the Spirit of God is already on you. The anointing of the Lord is upon you. It's not about something I can do for you. It's something that's between you and God. He's weighing everything in the balance. It's for you to surrender your heart to Him. It's for you to say, Oh Lord God, today I cry out to you. Lord, I want this misery to go from me. I want this wretchedness to go from me. I want all of these things that hinder me. All these weights. I want to lay aside every weight that I may run this race. Oh Lord, with a pace that I may go forward the glory of God. That I may reflect your glory, Lord, in the name of Jesus. So that church will mean something to you. That Christ will mean something to you. You won't be carrying your Bible because everybody is looking at you. But you're carrying your Bible because you love Him. Know Him. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, you would touch each one, and minister to each one, and give them a revelation today, Lord, of the things I have spoken to them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release upon them the power of the Holy Ghost. I receive upon them the spirit of holiness and the anointing of the Lord. To break every yoke, to destroy every burden, to set them free, to fill them with the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. We repent, Lord God, where we have missed you, where we have failed you. We repent in the name of Jesus. For this, praise and worship in the name of Jesus. I set minds free today. I set spirits free today. I set bodies free today. In the name of Jesus.
Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the Living God. Hasoko Brodo Shakabata. Hila Bradio Zubra Kadi, Lamam Brodo Shapata. Ligradia Zunta Basha. Many of you are being filled with a new anointing, saith the Lord. For the Spirit is descending upon you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Holiness back in the church, Lord. Righteousness. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Bless you. Praise you. That we may know you, Lord. That we may know you. In the name of Jesus. That we may know you. we may know you. we may know you. That we may know you. we may know you, Lord. we may know you. we may know you. I know you. Women know you. That's why, that's why, that is why, that is why we're not impacting the nation. And that is why we're not changing other people that don't know Christ. Because we ourselves are not yielded to Him. But if you would, like a seed, yield yourself to God. You fall down and die. You would grow up into a tree, giving life to others. You know another thing that the, the Lord, another thing that the Lord wants you to know. Don't keep on saying my way, Lord, my way. No, say His way. What do you want me to do, Lord? Which is the way shall I go? Which way, Lord? What will please you? I command every demon of darkness, every spirit of infirmity, every spirit that will usher in unholiness out in Jesus' name. Holiness will be our portion. The love of God will be our portion. In the name of Jesus. Many of you have been touched by God. It's not what pastor can do for you. It's what the Holy Spirit can do for you. Many of you have been touched. Many of you God has spoken to. There were things in your life you have released to God. You won't go and do them anymore. There are things that you know that you had to let go. You have let go this morning. You're free of those things. You're free of impressing people. You're free of a dual personality. No. Now the only reason you live for is the love of Christ. The only reason you live for is to please Him. And if God can get your heart, then you've got God's heart. You understand? Your ways will be prosperous. Things will happen in your life. God will add value to you. You will be important to God. When you say, Lord, He'll say, Hear my. Speak. If you, if you will just walk like that, boy, you'll have intimacy with God. You'll know Him. You will know Him. No man, no woman can meet your need. No financial package can meet your need. 
Not, nobody in this world can meet your need except Jesus. You understand? Jesus. What a wonderful name. How awesome is that name? Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. It's the sweetest name we know. Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God. What a name. What a name. What a name. What a name. Be fair to other people. Listen to me. Be fair to other people. Don't criticize and judge. Because the same grace God gave you, give to others. We judge all the time. Write off people. God doesn't want us to operate like that. He wants you to operate with the spirit of forgiveness of love, of understanding. There are people at different levels. Because God has brought you to a place that you think, you know, it's a high level. Don't look at those down there. Because one day you were there too. But now the grace of God lifted you up. So lift others up. As Christ lifts you up, lift others up. Mend the broken hearted. Those that are wounded, bind them. Don't push people around. They are God's people. You understand? Don't treat people shabbily. You may know that they are sinning in some way or the other. Don't judge them. Love them. Feel for people. The Bible says Jesus had compassion. Have compassion for people. Compassion for families. Compassion for the people out there. The Hindus, the Muslims, the people that are unsaved, the drunkard on the street. A person that's a prostitute, have compassion for them. Don't be so churchified, drive now down the road and say, Oh, thank God I'm not like them. No, that's not the way. God has given you the ministry of reconciliation. To reconcile people back to God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Oh, today your life has changed. I know it, I know it. Some of you, I'm telling you, many of you had a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. There's a woman amongst you. Oh, the Lord's telling me that you were contemplating suicide. That's well, not for you. It's not for you. Did you hear what I said? It's not for you. You felt rejected. You were rejected all your life, by the way. You were rejected from a little girl. It's a woman I'm speaking to. You were rejected as a little girl growing up. Your family rejected you, and then you got into relationships with men, and then you felt rejected. And now you're thinking, well, Lord, God loves you. I want you to know that. God loves you. And the devil's trying to give you a way out. That's not the way out. The way you say yes to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Wow, time is gone. Now, I want to do something. I just want, it's fine, you can stay here. All of you that are here, stay here. Don't move from here. I just want you to create a little pathway so that the deacons can come down and take the communion emblem. So all the people that are in front, don't go back to your seat, stay there. All of you that are standing, stand. The deacons are going to quickly give you the communion emblems. Then I want you to receive the bread, receive the wine, and hold it in your hands. We'll administer and take part of it together, all right? This is great. This is great. God's touched so many of you. The love of God has come back. The grace of God has come back. I see your future bright. I see your relationship with God growing. Brighter and brighter. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You have now found a reason for coming to church and doing the things of God. It's for the love of Christ. Nothing else but the love of God. That love of God now has been shed abroad your heart. Hallelujah. So even if you are kneeling down, it's okay. You can just receive the communion there. If you're standing, it's okay. Receive the communion while you're standing. 
Some of you are sitting, it's fine. Just receive the communion while you're sitting. But the Lord's touched so many of you. I'm telling you. I'm so glad about that. There are things that have been released from your life. There are pressures that have lifted up. Your life is going to be sweet now. You will understand why you're living, why you're functioning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. While we're doing that, I want to ask a question. Who here has not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Can I see your hand? If you are here this morning, but no one's led you to the Lord, you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you have received Him at some time, but you walked away from Him, and today you want to say, Lord, I want to come back. Can I see your hand? Just wave your hand at me whether you're kneeling or you're standing. Is there anyone? I have a hand there. Thank you, sir. I see your hand. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? It's two, three, four. All right, I want all of you that raised your hand, would you please walk to me? Come on the stage. I want to lead you to Christ. Come. Just come here quickly. Just give us a few minutes. We'll close the service now. But this is so important. So that means if you raised your hand, would you just come up? And so I want to lead you to Christ and pray with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, give them a hand. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. Um, what we can do is allow them, Louise, Louise allow them to, to go down that way. It will be easier there, right? Hallelujah. You have not received the Lord? You, you, have you received Jesus? Stand behind her. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Power of the Lord, renewing, renewing of His Spirit, in the name of Jesus. To stand with her. Hallelujah. Okay, all of you, I want you to pray a simple prayer. It's an act of faith. If to receive Jesus Christ is an expression of your heart, I want you to pray this prayer after me, all right? Say, Heavenly Father, say, I come to you this morning. I believe. With all my heart, Jesus, for you. You remember now that He dwells inside of you. You remember now that you belong to Him. Amen? So as you partake of the bread, that's what you ought to remember. And after the same man also, He took the cup. When he had sub saying, this cup is a new testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. So, this is symbolic of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. You start to remember now that Jesus shed his blood for you and I. So this is symbolic. As you partake of it, you start to remember that. That, oh boy, my sins were cleansed, forgiven by the blood of Jesus. That I'm a new creature because of the blood of Jesus. I stand justified because of the blood of Jesus. I stand the righteousness of God because of the blood of Jesus. I might have had, I might have had a life that was not good before. But from today, as I stand in His presence... I'm accepted in the beloved. I'm not rejected by God anymore. I don't have to feel condemned anymore. God accepts me just like I am because of Jesus. That means when God looks at you, He looks at you through the eyes of Jesus. And you are accepted. And He says, you are my child, you are my son, you are my daughter. I love you. I love you. If there was one message God is giving you today as you're partaking of this, is this, I love you. You say, Lord, I don't deserve your love. He says, nonetheless, I love you. 
You say, Lord, I've messed up. He says, I love you. You say, Lord, I've sinned. He says, I love you. He said, Lord, I really messed up. He says, I love you. You said, Lord, I don't even know if I love myself. He says, I love you. No conditions attached. In the Lord Jesus Christ, that is the love of God. See, what the Bible says, he says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave his son to you and I that we could come back to him. Hallelujah. So remember that as you take that. In Jesus' name, you may partake. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Why are you living? Why do you come to church? Why do you bring your tithes and offerings to the Lord? Why do you read your Bible? Why do you pray? Why are you in ministry? What is your purpose in life? To please God. That is the reason. It doesn't matter who condemns you and what they say. It's worth it to serve the Lord. The early disciples in the, books of, in the book of Acts, they said, the Bible says, they counted it worthy to have suffered for the Lord. That means when they were beaten and thrown in jail, they rejoiced. They said, wow, we have suffered with Christ. When you are persecuted, rejoice. When you are rejected, rejoice. When people laugh at you because of Christ, rejoice. Blessed are you. You are blessed of the Lord. I would rather be rejected by man, but accepted by God. I respect all men, but in respecting all men, I still run after God. Remember that. Remember that. So many of you, I know God's touched you. How do you end a service like this? I have to release you. We've gone over our time now. So what I want you to do is um, don't lose what you've got. You have received something. Take it home with you. Treasure it. Look after it. Walk with the Lord. Love Him. Please Him in all of your ways. Express your love to Him every day. Take it home with you. Now, as you go, you can greet someone, say congratulations, God has touched you. And then we got the book table at the back. You can get my new books that, that's there. There are uh, visitors, first timers. Please, would you come on this side? And even all you lovely people, if you would just wait here so that we can pray with you and then take your details down, all right? So all the first time visitors, And please remember, Pastor Zubeda says that the membership class will definitely begin, but we will have it next, Sunday, next Monday evening at 7. We're taking a break this week because of the book launch that we had yesterday. So we want people to have a rest. So the, that, that class will begin on, on next Monday, all right? And then I'll see you on Wednesday. The Lord bless you. I love you very much. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.